Deadly Tarantula Girl coming to you from my inside office, bringing you alive with the spectacular, handsome, intelligent, amazing Tarantula Girl coming to you from my inside office. And there's my echo. Okay. Got that muted. All right. So we are here today <laughs> with Chris and and um, this guy is super amazing. He is not only a world famous musician, he is obviously a reptile keeper and breeder. He is the owner of Eyeballs Python and the Snakes and the Fat Man podcast. So let's all say hello and welcome to Chris. How are you doing today, Chris? I, I love how you say world famous musician and we, <laughs> played, we played in strip malls in California, okay? Um, and I, you know, and it, California is full of international people, Chris. Yes, I'm aware. <laughs> uh, and and it, it's eyeball pythons, not eyeballs python. Um, but other than that, glowing intro. Glowing. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. now that I screwed that up royally, <laughs> how are oh, you no, doing good. today? Good, good. How are you? I am great. We've been texting on and off throughout the day, and you know that my weekend has started off with a bang. So, um, you guys, I, I've got just a kind of a small space here, but I am wearing my yeah. snakes and the fat man swag that he sent me. So, uh, tell us a little bit about your merch line, since uh, you were so generous to send me this beautiful shirt. Well. Uh, you look awesome in that shirt. Um, but uh, th th there is no merch line. There's two shirts. There's uh, a <laughs> merch line. We... Well, maybe. Uh, <laughs> there's one shirt that we made for Tinley when I first started the podcast, and it's um, it's my giant head on it. And <laughs> I, I, I literally I hated that shirt, but they sold out. So for Arlington, I just threw these together and. Uh, had you been wearing that at Arlington, I would have uh, I would have noticed you standing at the table. Yeah, that's another story. So before we go any further, I have to stop really quick and say a million thanks to John Feely. He yep. is a fantastic guy. John Feely has a channel called Feely's Clutch. He's a reptile guy, super amazing military man. He and his wife both served our country. They have three little ones, one who was just, just born, a beautiful seven pound boy. And I just want to say to definitely go to his channel. He's amazing. John is like my backup tech guy. He didn't even know me. And one day he just saw that I was struggling as I do because I'm an idiot in some areas. And um, he's like, hey, if you ever need tech support, let me know. And I honestly call him and he helps me out all the time, including today. So thank, thank you, Donna. You. I just want you to So, oh, I, I, I'm being told that nobody saw the shirt because uh, the camera was on you off again. There you go. <laughs> There's the beautiful ladies uh, shirt that Chris has for sale. So how can people get your shirts, Chris? Uh, they could just go to uh, snakesandafatman.com and uh, click under the, uh, the tease uh, button and uh, they could order their shirts there. Awesome. So awesome. Um, so you've got, um, you are a musician. You're still a practicing musician. Are you recording any music right now? Playing in bands? What's going on with all that? No, no, I, I haven't done that for a couple of years. Now. And, um, I'm just too busy doing other things. I, I found uh, this podcasting thing is really working out. And uh, people actually hire me out to do their podcast now. And between that stuff, the uh, shop, and we, we have three or 400 snakes uh, and my, you know, the day job, it, it, I'm kind of, you know, kept busy with those three things and I don't really do music anymore. Plus music now is so disposable anyway. Nobody cares. Nobody gives a crap. I wouldn't say no one cares, but yeah, it's a different world as far as, um, being able to just kind of like download media and, and hear media everywhere. It's, it's a different world for musicians. I want to give a quick shout out. We've got some people commenting and stuff. We've got um, Chris Stoggin, Ron Fultz, MNTs. Uh, 
uh, J Dog One Party, uh, Jeff. They're all I don't know what gumdrop means, but thanks. I don't know. Maybe uh, people are saying that they're excited, laughing that you played in strip mall, saying yo, what's up? So excited. Hello. So thank you everyone who's on. Keep on commenting. If you guys have any questions for Chris as we're going, um, I'll I'll be watching that. That'll be great. Yes, yes. So if you have questions for Chris or me, obviously you can talk to me any week. Um, Tragic Transformer Electra just jumped on. So, um, so you and a business partner, Danny, when did you start Eyeball Pythons? Once again, it's Eyeballs Python. <laughs> That's what I was like. Is it Eyeballs or Eyeball? No, it's, it's not. not eyeball. Eyeball. See, you even made me screw it up. It's Eyeball Pythons. Um, <laughs> We started it about, Did I not? <laughs> about six years ago. We started it. Okay. And it it turned out to be fairly big right away. And we ended up buying 10 snakes initially. And within six months, we had 200. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah, it became a business. Right like, away. Wow. We were keeping so, everything in my apartment. So oh, right. Danny said, uh, he's not going to be happy until I'm living on my balcony. I had snakes all over my apartment. Well, that's a good way to live, I think. Nah, uh, no, it'll kill you. But that's, what, <laughs> that's what made us get a shop. So, um, I, I know. So, you've been interested in reptiles your whole life, or since you were young. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, growing up in New York, um, you, you don't really have access to a lot of reptiles. I mean, we grew up in New York City, in the Bronx, and. If anybody's heard my podcast, uh, Donato and I would go out and just try and catch spiders and garter snakes every night. I mean, I mean, you don't really get to go outdoor herping on 125th Street. You know, yeah. um, basically, I always wanted snakes and I moved out finally and I got my own, you know, uh, Argentinian boa attacking the glass. And I was like, there's no way I'm keeping this. I I'm terrified of this thing. As a matter of fact, the first night I had it, I kept it in, aquar in an aquarium and I put my dining room chair on top of the aquarium so that the thing wouldn't get out and I could sleep safe. And then I oh just went away to a pet shop the next day. So that was your first snake? That was my first snake. How big was it? Oh, I don't know, 10 inches. <laughs> I know you're afraid of spiders too, right? Yeah, I, I was. I, I am now. I wasn't. <laughs> but um, horrible. It's a horrible way to grow up, you know, being terrified of everything. But <laughs> out to LA, um, my girlfriend had like 10 or 11 15 foot berms, you know, Burmese pythons. Did you say 50 foot berms? No, no, 15. Up. <laughs> oh, I'm like, so it was okay. 12 to 15 feet. They, they were all they were all pretty big. Um, okay. She would just let them roam the house, you know. So I had to kind of get used to it really quick. Okay. And, uh, you know, fell in love with them, and then we just kind of grew it from there. We had a bunch of other things too, like uh, you know, chameleons and um, uh, frill dragons and big monitors, and we had an alligator for a little while. Um, so it, it was fairly. You know, it was fairly interesting, you know, the California move, going from no reptiles in New York to probably right. different reptiles in California. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So um, you were, were you playing music full time at that time? Uh, no, actually, we started a business and the business just took off and was pretty successful. So I just started playing music again. Mm. We were in San Diego at the time and I put together a band and we became, you know, kind of a big fish in a small pond really fast. And that's when we moved up to Hollywood. And then we started doing, you know, a bunch of things in Hollywood. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. So um, what's the, your favorite band that you've ever played it with, in and um, with, like in a concert? Well, we opened for a lot of people. Uh, we opened for people, I mean, everybody from... Uh, members of Wasp and Rat and you, you know all these all the, all the hair bands. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I loved opening up for um, 
what the hell's the name of that that cover band out in LA? Um, they used to be called Danger Kitty. Now they're uh, Steel Panther. Mm. I, I used to love opening up for them, and we opened up the, for them at the uh, the Key Club quite a quite a number of times. Cool. And then, uh, you know, after the band broke up, I ended up playing with um, or or at least subbing for. You, you know, a lot of the '80s never have been bands. You know, so um, so that was fun. Like, like the L.A. Guns and the Bullet Boys, and you know, I ended up playing with a couple of those, you know, bands. And then I just said, "All right, the hell with this. This uh, this isn't paying the bills anymore," and, and moved back to New York. Interesting. So, how long were you in L.A.? Uh, Twelve years. Wow, that's that's a good chunk of time. So yeah. I was born in California. If I don't know if you knew that or not. Yeah, I knew that. And then I migrated to the desert. Hey, do you know if Justin Kabelka was born in Napa? Because somebody told me that. I have no idea. I do know that Justin lived in the same town in Colorado that I lived for a while. Interesting. Uh, I don't know where he was born. I mean, I, I'm not that much of a fanboy, but I'll ask him. If oh, you come on. I think you love Justin Kabelka. Uh, let me tell you something. I, I love the guy, but um, <laughs> but I, I don't love him as much as you do. Where like, oh, <laughs> you're so handsome. Do you have all these muscles? Did I tell oh, Justin he was you, handsome? You did on the um on the video from Arlington. I did. I believe so. No, no, no. If you did, you were thinking about when I interviewed Brian Cusco. I know. As a matter of fact, Matt, I got. I have this just in case it'll make you feel better. Okay, how's that for you? Does that make your? <laughs> like oh, it? Brian, let your hair down. Oh, who is that back there? Oh, Chris, you yeah, already let your hair down for. You know, that's oh, even, I thought I had Brian there for a minute. Even better, Chris, you let his mean? hair down for me. Even better. Uh, Brian's never let his hair down for me. Brian is the new Aquaman. Of <laughs> oh, there we go. Tuck the hair behind the ear. Act humble. Oh, please. <laughs> when you're on the lower side of average like I am, you learn <laughs> to do whatever works. Okay? <laughs> so, a uh, funny story about me and Chris and Brian and Justin. Let me tell you guys a little story here. So I'll let you know it and then I'll correct you. Yeah, yeah. So about a month ago, let's see, we're in April, a couple months ago, end of February, I was sick and I decided I must trek to the NARBC. I just, I have to do it. And the closest one was the Arlington NARBC in Texas. So even though we were vending at a show in Texas, like a week or two later, I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go, I'm going to go to the NARBC. I was so sick. I got really sick. And everybody's like, are you still going? I was like, yes, I'm definitely going. There was a whole saga. The whole saga. What did we listen to? Almost the whole way there. This guy. Chris Eaton. Snakes and the Fat Man going on and on. Brittany Gobble. I got to find out about Brittany Gobble, who's awesome. She's going to be on the show soon. She breeds Lycoys and uh, Savannah cats, I think. Yeah, she does Savannah cats. And now she's into ball pythons. She's a model. She's an awesome girl. Um, so when we got there, I was like, oh, be still my beating heart. There's Chris Eaton. <laughs> Your face. Sure. There's Chris Eaton from Snakes and the Fat Man. And... Uh, Chris is just sitting there on his throne. He had this giant blonde next to him who he was quite occupied by. And he was oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> he was talking to someone. He was talking to someone else. So I I went up to his booth, you know, my whole five foot three, and he didn't bat an eye. He did not even break his concentration to to take a moment to even give me a wink or a nod or a wave. Of course, he, he didn't have any idea who I was. So I walked away brokenhearted. And later in the day, <laughs> later in the day, Justin was so sweet to me. And I interviewed him. And then after that, Brian was came up and gave me a big bear hug when he saw me. And he said, hey, sis. 
And he approached me with love. And so later I did an interview with him. And I just, though, I wasn't cool enough for Chris at the uh, NARBC. Perhaps straighten out the story a little bit. <laughs> um, do you normally just go to random tables and stand there and not say anything? You were occupied. I was occupied because I was interviewing like 30 people that weekend. And whenever I went to a table, I would introduce myself and not just stand there like a kid that won third place at the Special Olympics, okay? And I would just go up and say, hi, I'm Chris from Snakes and the Fat Man, and they, I'd shake their hands. And for the people that I didn't know, they you know, came over and did an interview with me. You just stood there. I probably, I, I know what you were thinking. You were thinking, oh, his voice is a lot sexier than the actual. <laughs> okay? Because he's really ju just, I mean, he looks like fat Jesus. Yeah. I don't want to talk to him, okay? <laughs> So, so I, I know that you just turned around and walked away. I wasn't occupied with Erin, who Erin is smoking hot. If anybody ever you know, saw her, she's probably uh -huh. with uh -huh. nice little people on Facebook. You came if you came into my table wearing uh -huh. that shirt that you're wearing now, uh huh, because it has your name on it. No, 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 even just a similar shirt than that. Instead, you had like this giant collar on from the 70s. That was the next day. The shirt was buttoned all the way up to your chin, okay? <laughs> you know, if you want to get somebody's attention, if you're not going to talk, you have to wear a shirt like that. I but looked as cute as a button. What's that? I looked as cute as a button, and it wasn't enough for you. Uh, I, I, I don't know if you did. Um, I did. I don't know. You just talked about how you were sick and you were throwing up all night. and you, you looked I didn't sick. throw up. I had a stuffy nose. It was terrible. Okay. Well, if you were wearing that shirt with the yim yams out. Yeah, a shirt that says, I'm Chris Eaton. That's all. See, if you would have did that to me live, <laughs> I would have talked to you. No, I don't think you would have. I'm here's not good the, enough. Here's the problem. No, I'm, just, I'm, not good enough. I'm just too cool for the average snake jerk. Okay. Apparently, uh, but you love me now, right? I do. I uh, we we've talked a lot since we've met. I know. You know so, so yeah. Even though he rejected me that day, I still was like, you know what? I'm gonna give this guy another chance. I oh, friended him on Facebook, and then it was like, it was on from then. Well, the, yeah, because then I saw the pictures with all the yams out, and I was like, oh, I can't not get this, you know, <laughs> friend this girl. And, and and your mind was blown by my intelligence and sophistication too. I don't even know if you're smart or not, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, I have no idea. I don't know what you do for a living. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't even hear you 80% of the time that you talk, but you look real good. So I pay attention. Well, you know, I don't know what to say. If, if that's the, the size of your mental capacity, who that am I to argue? Beyond my mental capacity. All right. <laughs> That's me on a good day. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now that we got past the tragic story of how we didn't meet, tell us a little bit. Oh, so um, you have a website where you sell your snakes. And I know you also advertise on Morph Market. Uh, uh, give us a little blurb about Morph Market because I know you're a big fan. My I, video is on their homepage right now, by the way. Kind of famous. Uh, they're actually a sponsor of the uh, Snakes and the Fat Man podcast. Uh, I love John. I love everything he does. Uh, I think Morph Market actually turned around the entire ball python industry. So uh, John should be given props for that. And everybody should just go out and uh, actually, you know, email John or join Morph Market and tell him how great the, you know, the site is because it's just one of the better sites out there. Absolutely. So, um, I mean, in the years past, it was just like a, well, I won't say it, a mess. I'll say that. I'll say it was a mess. It was shit. King Snake was a, a, a crap hole, and uh, the BOI was just a joke. If you put some up there, within five minutes, 200 other things bumped it down to, you know, page 13. Right. So, uh, the problem is that nobody really cared enough to do it the right way until John came around. Well, I don't think the people that were um, 
in the industry had the knowledge or the tools. And so John was like that perfect puzzle piece because he comes from like a, like a tech engineering background. I don't remember exactly. Um, I interviewed him recently and that's the video that's up on the Morph Market homepage. Um, I mean, he comes from a com computer designing background. And so when he got into the reptile hobby somewhat recently, like within the last five to seven years ish, he saw a need. And so he is the one that stepped up and developed that marketplace. And it's been amazing. So um, I would consider you definitely a, a larger breeder. Um, tell us some of your favorite features about Morph Market and why you would choose it over one of the old, um, I don't know, platforms, websites. Well, the platforms are, are, are a joke. That's why they're, they're crap. And you know what's great is that John has done this for a couple of years now. And if you go to King Snake or the Board of Inquiry, they're still shit. They haven't even upgraded to what John like they didn't think, oh, you know, maybe we should hire a John Lehman to right. try and bring us up to speed with this. And you know, as far as I'm concerned, King Snake and the BOI, they, they got what they deserve. You, you know, BO the BOI was great. Uh for, BOI is Fauna Classifieds, by the way. Yeah. Um they, they were great maybe in the early 90s when like AL birth of the internet times right right exactly but the, you, you know you look at them now and they're still garbage you right. know like you think is still garbage uh fauna classifieds is still garbage the, the only place to do it you, you know to you know sell reptiles right now is, is morph market i i hope that everybody knows that well, a lot of people use their individual websites and a lot of people use Facebook. That's bullshit too. Uh, because you, you know why? W with Facebook, you could have 30,000 friends. And if you put up a post, it's only going to go to 200 of those friends. Yeah. Okay. That, that's the way it works. So, and it, it's kind of temporary. It, and it's right. Exactly. So uh, you, you're, you, you gotta go with Morph Market. I mean, it, it costs, uh, 400 bucks to to join for the year there's a, there's a free membership too like if you don't have that much to sell if you don't need a premium membership you can sell for free on there yeah but but also for 400 if you don't have a 400 dollars animal where you could justify your entrance into morph market right from the get-go then, then you, you shouldn't be selling animals okay so just, just everybody should go and join the top tier part of morph market yeah um because because in reality, that's where you get the most benefits. Right, that's true. You know, so there is a free version that, that you know, the smaller breeders could join, but I think there's a limit on the amount of money that you could sell an animal for. You know, like, like if you're gonna have an animal under $800, then yes, you could do the free thing. Right. But, you know, if you're like us and you need to keep the lights on every month, you, you know, you wanna, you, you wanna, you know, join the top tier because, that's the one that's going to help you out the most. And John is amazing. You know, like, yeah. not like John. So uh, what I'm saying is everybody just give John your money. Yeah, no, definitely. It's absolutely worth it. I mean, I know several people who uh, vend on Morph Market and essentially you make your money back pretty much right away. Um, I mean, there. And another thing is too, they're still constantly evolving and updating the website. And John essentially does it on his own. I think he has a couple people helping him out now. Um, but he basically has given up all of his other endeavors in life, including even keeping reptiles, to focus on right. Morph Market. And you can see that because I know, for example, if you have a huge spreadsheet of animals that you want to upload ads, you can just upload the spreadsheet and it pretty much does everything for you. Yeah, up, just upload the whole Excel file. Right. You know, and you know, you don't have to sit there, you know, listing pictures with every animal, listing descriptions. You could just do it all in one shot. And if I had to list 30 ads on Fauna, I, I would try and kill myself. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's how much of a pain in the ass it is. Whereas uh, Morph Market, I, I drag a file over and everything's done. Yeah, it's it's definitely, I don't know, the wave of the future sounds kind of cliche, but I mean, 
it's it's where we all need to be now and you know i even use it for several things like for example if somebody mentions a morph and i want to even see what it looks like i just put it in a morph market because then there's all the nice examples right there and then obviously sometimes i end up buying an animal or discovering a store or something but um it's that website is incredible absolutely incredible um here's another thing i wanted to talk about was um repta chip you're using that now right oh i'm loving them guys yeah repta chip is the best coconut uh substrate on the market best i mean i mean jt i like it though. what's that i like that it's eco-friendly oh i don't really care about that but yeah yeah sure okay um <laughs> jt is probably one of the nicest guys in this whole business i mean i, I met him once in uh tinley years ago mm -hmm. and we didn't talk that much but um i had contacted him when i was uh kind of doing a search for sponsors and and he was just right there i mean we were using rep chip way before they sponsored the show okay and, and the only problem that i had with rep chip was um they couldn't that they would run out so quick oh wow shipments over of you, you know a thousand bricks two thousand bricks and they'd be out by the, the following week so they're really doing, you know, great with that. And now did you see the, um, they actually have it in bags where it's actually not, you don't have to soak it and, and break it up anymore. I think they're calling it ready chip or something. Yep. So, and you know, what other guy puts his cell number on the package of the product? So if you have a problem with it, you could call him directly. Nobody does that. You think I put my number on my uh, podcast so people could tell me how much I suck? I don't right. do that. You, you know, you don't do that. It took a lot to get her number, all right, to get Yams. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, so, you know, Raptor Chip just does it on every bag, uh, on every product that they sell. So uh, they're, they're people to trust. Yeah, Plus, although I will say JT won't call me back. I've had questions for him. So hook me up, Chris. Well, probably you just stood at his table like a, like an invalid and was just smiling, hoping that he would talk to you. I just, I just sent him a text that said, pick question mark. Yes. Yeah. I knew it, I knew it. <laughs> because, because JT, uh, one hell of a body. All right. That guy was like, uh, that guy used I've to never seen that guy. That was a, that was a throwback to one of your old episodes. Do you oh, remember that story? Oh. No, say it again. Oh, one of your old episodes where you said some dweeb was like wanting to buy a snake and he just sent you a message that yeah, just said pick. Like, pick question mark and then I cursed him out. And I actually yeah. ended up telling him, he asked me who my manager was and I told him it was Kenny Masick and I gave Kenny, I gave him Kenny's name. <laughs> you know, the, the hell with it. Um, but that's what, you know, we were doing, there was a time where we were, you know, we were really friends with everybody before all the drama started and, and all, you know, you get involved in all this shit with ball pythons. And, um, it, you know, now, I mean, Kenny's still a good friend and I would still, you know, I would still send prank calls, Kenny, you know, Kenny, but some, you know, some people that I used to think were good people are, are absolute trash. So, like, tell me who? I gotta tell you who right now, because a lot <laughs> of people, uh, I would say that we spent significant amounts of money with some people that we thought were cool and then ended up to be a uh, piece of the crap. Mm. So I will just, you know, leave it at that. And eventually I'm going to, you know, uh, we're in a process. Like I would love to get our collection down to like a hundred snakes and not really, you know, not really have the, the burden of 400, you know, on you all the time, but a right. hundred good snakes, you know, and just kind of pare it down. Once I pare it down, to what we actually want to produce, then I'll just call out all these jerk offs that, you know, that screwed us and screwed other people, you know, over the past five or 10 years. So are you talking about like, um, kind of, um, really getting selective about your projects or just doing high end or what are you thinking? Just doing, just doing high end, go, go more of like an Ozzy route where Ozzy's a real boutique shop, right? You know, Ozzy will produce, a hundred snakes a year, but there'll be ten thousand dollars snakes, right? Eight 
no mistakes. He, you know, I'm interviewing him too, by the way, for anyone who cares. He's awesome. I already know because you're just like, oh, the fat man is not good enough. We got to get a badass, cool black guy in here like Idris Elba, okay? And Ozzy is the Idris Elba of snakes. Ozzy is, he's amazing in so many ways. Don't get you, jealous, Chris. You don't, don't even jealous. know how, how great Ozzy is. He's I, so great. I love him. I don't know if I love, love him as much as I love you or as much as Justin and Brian love me. Yeah, you're fake. You, you know, your fake compliments. <laughs> but Ozzy is one of the greatest people in the, in this business. I love Ozzy. Uh, I always try and get some time with Ozzy at all the bigger shows. Uh, in he, he had some great stuff in Daytona this year, and he wasn't even selling any of it. He was just like, I'm just going to show it off. You know? Uh, and, and he's one of the nicest guys in the world. I swear to God, I love the guy. Uh, he's one of the few people that uh, I could really say you know, if he, if he did anything from us, we we would get it. You know, get it to him right away. Yeah, he's incredible. I have respect for him for so many reasons, but um, of course, what he's done for the hobby, and I feel like he's an amazing role model. Um, yeah. He is a minority. I don't know. I look up to him. Um, well, he's a minority. How can we just can't be Ozzy? Because I'm a minority too. We're like. That's yeah. a bond between yeah. us. Yeah. You're a different kind of white, okay? I'm oh, more Rooney. <laughs> so you told us or not who you don't like. Who do you have uh, respect for? Who were your mentors in the hobby? Tell us that. Uh, well, well, Justin really kind of took a, a a liking to us kind of right away, uh, or, or, or at least I I, I hope he did. When I first called Justin, I, I called other people to ask them how I should act around Justin because, you know, I, I curse a lot. I, you know, kind of just open my mouth and say stupid things. And all of them told me, uh, don't call Justin on Sunday. Don't curse in front of Justin. Uh, you, you know, he's not that type of guy. And um, it, it turns out nothing that they told, told me about him was true. I, I mean, <laughs> nothing. And, uh, you know, I still talk to Justin, you know, at least three times a month. Um, and he, he's one of the other guys that are successful at this, and, but seems to be successful in a way where he's literally never screwed anybody. I mean, yeah, you can't find a bad thing about Justin. So Justin's one, one of the great people. Ozzy is one of the great people. Um, I Justin? Just, what's that? He kind of reminds me of like the Captain American of superheroes, Justin. He's like clean and wholesome and I don't know, just does it right. All right, stop. Stop. You're embarrassing yourself now. Okay. Because there's so much Justin love here. I'll find some kind of superhero reference for you, Chris. Don't get crazy. Fat Jesus. I told you. All right. Fat <laughs> Jesus is the way to go. Fat Jesus. Uh, I don't know if you're that holy. I look, I was an altar boy, all right. <laughs> so, yeah. That's what that's and then things went downhill from there. 12 years in Catholic school. So <laughs> you've been so corrupted since then. That's the reason I'm like this. I I can see that. I can see that. Repression was the wrong way for your parents to go because look what they created. Oh no, but the cool thing is, you know, going to Catholic school. You, you know, your whole school life, you get open up sexually. Um, by the priests, yeah, you know, so we could explore that, but we're gonna choose not to today oh, anyway. Good, but it's okay, <laughs> I got it. Um, as far as other people that I respect, okay, see, I've respect for other uh, Mark Mandic is great. You should get Mark Mandic on the show. Uh, he's from Canada and he's. I mean, he's he's in Peru right now, uh, looking at volcanoes. Right? That's awesome. How great is that? So, uh, Mark is awesome, and uh, coincidentally, Mark and Ozzy are really good friends. So, Mark is great. All right, I'm gonna hit him up, and if he ignores me like you did, I'm gonna call on you to be like, she may seem boring at first glance, but she's actually not as boring as she may appear. I, yeah, yeah, she's. 
I will. 70% of that is true. <laughs> um, let's see. What else was I going to ask you about? Oh, tell us about your podcast. When did it start? And um, yeah, it's pretty um, salty. I'll say that. It's very uh, real. You know what it is? It's just me. You know, it's just me. Uh, this is the way I am. So why, you know, I'm not going to be all smiles every day and, you know, like try and impress anybody on the podcast. Basically what happened was um, Sean Bradley was doing his podcast. Oh, geez. I love Sean. Yeah, I, I love Sean too now. I mean, I I, I think I'm going to go to the opening of his uh, um, choral store. Awesome. I would love to go down there for that. So I got to talk to him about that. But um, I was listening to Sean's podcast and I was realizing that Sean was interrupting everybody on his podcast that I wanted to hear from. So I was like, God damn it. And, you know, like one of the same nights that I heard a, a Sean podcast, I, I looked at, um, I was watching YouTube and I saw a Kevin Smith video and Kevin Smith said, you know, if you think you could do something better, just don't talk shit, go out and actually do it. So what I would do is I would just um, go out and what I tried to do was just get somebody huge, you know, oh, I sounded like Trump there, huge, um, for the first podcast, right? Yeah, which you did. Ralph Davis for the po first podcast. And and Ralph is, a, is like a fucking miserable fuck, man. He but is. Oh, he, I want to he, interview him too. He, he really is. He he's really. But but we um. Ralph he, talked about his butt problems, right? Well, we did that during the podcast. <laughs> uh, but, but prior to that, we were his clients. So you know, I called him up to ask him, and turned out he liked doing the podcast there, you know, so much that he offered to co-host it with me. Ooh. And um, I was just like, no, no, it is the Fat Man Show. Click, and I just hung up on him. But uh, <laughs> actually, no, I didn't do that. It, Ralph is still cool. And um, I just let the people talk. And, you know, I complained a lot. Uh, I just got fed up with the people in the industry. I, everybody from initial breeders and, you know, small time breeders to, to the bigger people. I just got fed up. So I said, let me do a podcast, you know, that just shows that I don't give a shit, you know, what I say. And, you know, I try to make people laugh because. Right. If, make somebody like pee their pants a little bit or have a stomach ache for you know from hurt from laughing so hard or milk come out of the nose what's that or like make milk come out of someone's nose right i've i've done my job if i could do that <laughs> one person laughs during the podcast i'm happy well i think you definitely accomplished that because your sense of humor is pretty hilarious yeah, very hilarious I enjoy listening to you. I still do it all the time. I think you're awesome. We like text, and then I listen to you at night. Some people might think I'm obsessed with you. What do you think about that? Uh, yeah, yeah. I would love to believe that that's true, but I know. <laughs> so, uh, right? You, you, you got a big ass stud boyfriend, literally right there. I do. Somebody else who's laughing, and you know, b believe me, you don't want this New York jerk. You know. Oh, I love you, Chris. My ass. Here's the I thing. do. Here's the thing. I know I'm an idiot, okay? Okay. Since I'm aware that I'm an idiot, that almost makes me smart a little bit. There we go. Um, See? So that's how I get by. You know? On paper, I'm very charming. You and are. I that's the weird part. Yeah. If I came to visit you guys within five hours, I'd be dropped off at the crash site. And no. Never to hear from you again. You're going to visit us. You're yeah. going to. Chris is going to come here. He's already started looking into it. Can't be telling everybody. People will be like, oh, I'm going to wait for Chris to get to Roswell because if he's with that uh, deadly tarantula girl, I only need one bullet to kill both of them. <laughs> so, People well, who would hate you would love me, I think. And people who would love me would probably hate you. Wait, hate me, love you, love me, hate you. I, I think that it's the uh, the constant smiling that you do. I am a happy person. You can never, what? never trust anybody that smiles as much as you do. And, and 
you, you can never trust anybody that wakes up at four in the morning and is literally busy until like 11 30 at night i'm a busy woman what can i say and, and you have children right oh yes i do yeah see you're part of the problem yeah, I know. Me and Justin both have five children. That's another thing we have in common. Yeah, but Justin got like like four of those kids are from Asia. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. yeah. That's another thing. Was when um, Justin was on our podcast, he had just adopted a little girl from uh, China. And he had just got back. And at the end of the podcast, we played the song Asian Hooker by Steel Panther. And wow. I think Justin knew what he was getting into it from that point on. That's hilarious. Um, so actually, Justin just got settled in this new place, and I guess they they're moving again. I probably to a bigger, nicer place because they're doing so well. Had yeah, you heard about that? He's going to be on the podcast next month, and we're going to talk all about it. That's awesome. Justin got, a, the, Justin got like horses and children and land and just yeah, Justin's basically like a farmer he's he like, is you know, he's like a little snake nerd farmer and um he, I, I don't he's like you I don't know how he does all this shit he little does. he's like eight feet tall well calm it down okay <laughs> calm it down with the sex talk okay I know <laughs> like, but Justin I, I never realized how how tall he was because I don't make Google guy eyes adjusted. Okay. When you're petite like me and then you're interviewing a guy and your camera person's like stand closer and I'm like, yeah, you. so tall. You were rubbing them jugs against his knees. Right. I saw it. You're a sicko. You were like tattoo. From and yeah. I walk up to you and Oh no blinders. Nope. You didn't see me, but Justin, what do you know? He took me into his loving arms. Well, you know what? Justin came up to my table and said, hey, you want to do an interview? And I was like, come here, buddy. <laughs> he didn't just come up to my table and stare at me, which if I would have noticed you staring at me at first, you know, I would have thought, God, what's this quiet girl with the giant jugs doing just staring at me? Um, but then I would have probably said, you know, hey, hello. Uh, who are you and do you want to be on? Because I had everybody on that weekend. Yeah, I, you had some I people. I would have been so much better than them. And yet that? I said, you had some people on that I would have been so much better than. Them. Although I will say John Lehman's kids were awesome. Or okay. at least one kid. I'm sorry. Well, you, you know, right after you're done shitting on the people of Texas, uh, we'll get to that <laughs> point. Uh, Yes, you would have been one of the better interviews, you know. <laughs> but um, you know, if you if you were there too, you know, the the girl I was dating at the time would be fucking pissed off at me too. So, because I'd have Aaron and you there. Oh, that that would have been a deal breaker, I think. Yeah, yeah. but you, you know, I I would have got the picture. You you know, man, a picture with you and Aaron would have made me look like the big shot at that show. That might have broken the internet. It might have. It might have. But you were too busy rubbing the yim yams against Justin, and that's cool. Well, that's cool, I get see, it. You should have said hello. Yeah, I should have said hello. You're right, I should have. I should have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> who would you say you admire most in the hobby? Who's been influential in your mind? Justin, Ozzy, and Mark probably. Those are the, the top three, I think. I mean, there's plenty of other good breeders, right. you know. I mean, I, I love what Sean did with the puzzle. Uh, I I love Mike Wilbanks. I mean, Mike yeah. Wilbanks. Amazing. One of my favorite people. And um, he's just like a cool, ba he's like a rock star, you know. Like, he's, um, he's so much, he's so different than Justin and like Mark, you know, where Mike is all tattooed up and kind of hip and cool and, and is still producing like 5,000 snakes a year. Crazy. Um, he's, he's just one of the best people that when we were coming up, we really looked up to. Um, but then, you know, I, I, I try to, I try to keep 
positive as little as possible. And I try really like, I, I like to go negative. I like to go heavy on the negative. Right, right. And, uh, there's so many more jerk offs than there are good people in this business, you know? Uh, I don't know if I would say that, but please. there's some jerks. Really? Really? I, I wake up every day to these jerk off people that are That's emailing. True. Me. Can, can can you take 13 more pictures of this snake uh, that's on Morph Market? And could I have a current weight? And I'm just like, I put the ad up yesterday. Right. Okay? The weight is has it Has it gained or lost a gram since then? Has it shed? I, I, has it had a sip of water? I hate these people. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I hate them. I, I, I love the, you, you know, like people that spend $300 are more of a problem than people that spend $5,000. Yes, that's true. And it's probably because their money is hard earned and they're struggling, or maybe they're not as experienced in the hobby. So they're kind of gun shy. What? Really? Yeah. Come on now. All right. We live in a world where you could get a college education on YouTube. You're telling me that you can't look up on YouTube how long to incubate an egg? Yeah, or, that's or, true. Or ball, you know, ball python shed. So, really, these people just annoy the piss out of me. Yeah, I hear that. It's a it, being a, a snake person is a horrible, horrible way to live your life. That's all I'm saying. It's a blessing and a curse. And well, and, and you keep like a thousand different species, right? Yeah, we do. Okay. Now, now tell me this. You with a thousand different species, if you quit your job and yeah. you quit his job, could you make a living on just breeding these animals? Well. Just, just come on. It'd be no. tough. It'd be come tough. On. Because a lot of the stuff that we do is not, there's not a huge mainstream market. Retics. Not everybody can house a retic. Um, you know, and we do some venomous and stuff like that. So that it's a real specialized niche. Tarantulas, it's not a huge niche. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it'd be tough. It would be tough. And I enjoy education, but, um, I mean, obviously kind of like the, the long term plan is to just be working with animals full time. However, I don't think I'd have to give up education because we would maintain our channel. And obviously that's education on a way broader scale than me being in a classroom with one group for a year. Well, if you had the chance to do something that, uh, for instance, like Bar Check did or is doing, or Dave Kaufman is doing, would you do that? It'd be hard to say no to that. It'd be really hard because I have wanderlust. I'm a person who it really enjoys traveling and ideally would love to see these animals in the wild. Um, Dave's doing a lot. Well, I wouldn't, I don't know. I don't know who's doing more international like field type stuff, but um, obviously my little place is just one tiny little drop in the bucket compared to if I could be traveling and filming all over the world and showing people that. Speaking of Dave, he's going to be on my show um, pretty soon. I know he's super busy uh, and Brian had been, although I'm thinking about hitting him up again. Um, yeah. That'd be hard to turn down because I love traveling. I love seeing the world and I enjoy people for the most part. Yeah, no, no, I hate, I hate people for the most part. I know you're like a little, a little hermit over there. Look, I'm like a little bitch. I, I, I but I, I know that. Okay. <laughs> what we do or what we should do is we should go up to Barchek's new zoo and just go to both of us and do a dual, uh, <gasps> you know, dual, uh, you know, person thing with him and Forrest. Let's do it. Yes, I love Forrest. I, 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 I'm as straight as an arrow, but if I was even a little bit crooked, yeah, the guy I would go for. I can. Oh, your man crush. Uh, We've man found crush. it. Yep. It's little Forrest Fanning. Oh, he's he's so great. You know. Yeah, you think he's hot? I mean, he's like almost so nice that you want to throw up a little bit. But he's really like one of those guys that are just like, I, I mean, we became instant friends at, at Arlington too. You, you know, we're, we're, he was on the show also. And 
him being on the show was one of the more educational shows that we've ever had. Yeah. And he and his wife just had twins like the other day, like within the last two weeks or something. Uh, Yeah. About three weeks, but yeah, he's, he's fantastic. He's really amazing. I mean, I don't know how old he is. He's young. He seems so young and he's so knowledgeable and he's so experienced and he's doing so much. He's working with tough animals and um, you can tell, you know, some of those people just kind of have like a, like a niche or a, I don't know, kind of like, I don't know, just a, like their spirit. I don't know how to explain Maybe it. If you're lucky, you know, Cusco go, goes down there a lot too. Oh, we man. could have a double date. It could be you on one arm and Brian on the other. And then, oh, and then Brian and Force Heaven. Yeah, I noticed how you didn't mention your goddamn husband during that. Where's, where's your husband going to be? Very funny. Don't fantasize, Chris. Don't get I, crazy on me. All right. <laughs> you know, everybody, everyone's a little gay, right? So. Oh, yeah. That's probably true. Yeah, we'll just see what happens. <laughs> Plus, <laughs> your husband plays drums, right? So He does. See? Yes. So we'll, it would uh, all work out. Yeah, it, it would definitely all work out. I would <laughs> pretty much bet that you would be the least popular one there in our group of man crushes among each other. Probably would. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, probably would. I'd be uh, like yeah. literally overlooked because it'd just be like, yeah. Just wear that shirt and everybody will be looking down, so it's okay. They'd be like, you're one of Chris Eaton, huh? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Plus, you own that that shirt. You are well, now. I do. Okay. This this was obviously strategically designed. Tell me about. Tell. Were you were you behind this? Because. You know what. You, you know what. I I would love to take the credit for it, but no. Um. I don't I, think Danny designed this shirt. I wanted a low cut shirt, and my printer was like. Don't worry, we'll take care of it. Oh, <laughs> and they know me. Up. And yeah, I mean, it's really, it's one of my favorite shirts in the world on women. I think you so. said it was a V-neck, but you didn't say it was like. It's like a scoop neck, right? No, it's no? not. Oh, I don't know. That's how little I know about women. Apparently. Um, but it, yeah, please. I, I got multiple people that can attest to that. Um, but it looks real good. Uh, you, you know, so I can't complain. You are the newest member of the House of Sexy with the Fat Man shirt. There we go. Oh. Thank you for uh, indoctrinating me. It, I feel like, strange. Let me tell you something. Your husband is going to have fun with that shirt tonight. I think he will. Well, yeah, I'm well aware. <laughs> okay, well, we I've got to ask you. To, we spoke prior to the show. <laughs> Where are you? in the whole spider gene debate what are your thoughts I, honestly i could give a shit i don't think you should have these english people you know who, and, and they're the ones who started it yeah you know jerk offs that run the, you know the big show over in england mm-hmm. uh, the, the spider gene you know you could have a, a non-head wobble spider in your collection right you could have a, a wobbly head spider Right. But, but that wobbly head spider is going to eat just as well as, as the non wobbly head spider. So, you know, the thing is that they're jerk offs for banning any gene. Okay. Now, as far as if, if you're going to cross animals, if you're going to cross a ball python and um, a blood python, uh-huh. or cross, you know, a, a ball python and something, I, I'm not, I, I'm against that. Uh huh. You know, but, but the spider gene just, Keep keep the spider gene there. The problem is these English people, um, and, and shout out to my friend Ashley and uh, Darren Farthrop. Um, and, uh, that they're from England, and actually Ashley came to, uh, to visit me about a year ago. Um, they um, Ash- Ashley and both Ashley and Darren were on our podcast. But okay. um, they um, the the people that run the show over in England are exactly like the people that run um, 
uh, fauna classifieds and king snake. Okay. They're school piece of shit that fucking think that everybody has to abide by their rules. Otherwise, you know, they're the only outlet there in England as far as the show goes. Uh huh. And, and they they were the ones that started this whole the spider genes not allowed. So I, I would say blow up their Twitter feed and give them a big f you to a bunch mm. of people for starting this thing. So okay, that's uh yeah I, I'm you got spider put it in you know something. Well, okay, let's be honest though. There are you could say neurological defects or even birth defects in. Any animal with any morph or even not sometimes. So I'm not, I mean, granted, it's it's seen more possibly in the spider gene. I've seen a lot of, I've seen a lot of normal spiders. I have some. Right, right. It, it, the whole thing is ridiculous. Um, I, I don't know how it caught on in America. You would think the... Um, the American people are more educated than that. But after meeting some of these young people who are into right. the hobby, they're dumb as shit. So maybe they're not educated enough. Well, did you see the video that Kevin McCurley did? That was like a rebuttal to a couple of channels that were like downing the spider gene. Yeah. And, and Kevin is awesome too, because Kevin's a lot like me and just speaks his mind. As right. a matter of fact, Kevin's, uh, little jabroni brothers thing is is fucking brilliant where he's making fun of people from new york um so yeah kevin is one of the top people in, in the industry and if you're not going to listen to kevin then you know you're a dumb shit the problem is that these kids you know just starting out now you, you know 16 18 20 right. 25 they haven't even heard of kevin mccurley right or tracy Parker or ralph davis Mm -hmm. You know, that they, they don't care, you know, that they, they could literally care less. So there's um, there's so much more out there. But, you know, they've heard of, um, you know, everybody's heard of Justin. Justin is this amazing marketing guy where, you know, I mean, Justin does something new and he's basically like a trendsetter on YouTube and on right. Facebook and all that. You know, Justin will tell you that. Black pastel is in a gene, and now every black pastel is going for fifteen hundred dollars when it used right. to be eight dollars. You know, so uh, Justin's like a mover in a way where not many other people are. Um, but Kevin could be a mover, but Kevin doesn't give a shit about making money. Right. You know, he doesn't care. We offered Kevin twenty one thousand dollars for a snake about seven years ago when we first started. And he was just like, nope, can't take, it. no, not gonna do it. He goes, if I don't get twenty five thousand for this, I'd rather look at it every every day, you know. Right. And, so, and um, one of those guys. Um. So, speaking of Kevin's rebuttal, one of those kids that he was kind of addressing is literally like a fifteen year old boy who has a channel. I was telling people spiders are no good, blah blah blah. And the other one, I think I'm pretty sure is a girl who's also very new. Like they've had like one breeding season. She's very new to ball pythons. And I just want to caution people that the world already fears and hates reptiles. So if you want all of our liberties taken away, go ahead and do a video cautioning people against this stuff, especially if you have no idea what you're talking about. And so I was really glad that Kevin actually um, specifically addressed them because they should have been called out. And I'm glad it was a great video. And um, Personally, I believe that we should keep on. Now, if you have a snake that's totally screwed up, you know, that's got kinks and all this stuff, maybe you don't want to put that snake in your breeding program. But I absolutely do not think we should be euthanizing or banning the spiders because um, well, it's a huge generality. Yeah, euthanizing a, a snake because it has a head wobble. I mean, I mean just get the hell out of it. But, but you know who's doing that? The, you know, the people euthanizing the snakes are, uh, you know, these first and second year people that they they bought two spiders and three pastels and they think they're going to be become millionaires. 
you know, from doing this. And they're going to think they right. make a hundred thousand dollars a year on this. And, and really they're just, you know, white trash living in their mom's basement. Like when, when you don't, when you don't put money into something, uh, you, you can't expect to get money out of it. You, you know, right. nobody can have that lottery ticket, you know, where, you know, a stranger pops into their collection out of nowhere. It's just not going to happen. You right. got to put money into it. And if you don't put money into it, um, you could not, you like, you lose the right to demand shit from people that have put money into it. I agree. And put the time in as well. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. Do you know um, Daniel Allison? That's not somebody I know. Daniel Allison runs uh, Constriction Addiction. Oh, also, okay. I've heard the company name. The he, name he's on the podcast too. Uh huh. Yeah. He, um, he talks a little bit like uh, Ricky Bobby from uh, Talladega Nights. So he's totally <laughs> okay. You know, he's like, I wake up in the morning and I piss excellence. You know, and I, I love. It. <laughs> um, so he's um. You know, he had somebody like he's big into the scaleless project. Okay. Somebody, uh, you know, bothering him, demanding to see, uh, um, you know, a picture of a scaleless on eggs or, you, you know, an adult scaleless. And uh, the guy, the guy who demanded it had some scaleless head stuff, but didn't buy any of it from Daniel. Oh, my gosh. And, and that's what I, what, you know, you want to piss off, you know, a big time breeder. All you have to do is not buy from them and then ask them questions about, you know, the steak that you bought from another person. Right. So. Yeah, no, I, um, the, yeah, that's crazy. You know, that's like these people who, you know, buy the, the fancy ball python from Petco and then they're going to email Ozzy and go, what right. is this? Can you identify this? Right. Mm. You know, this snake, this is one of my flyers. This is one of my, uh, this is the Lone Star Reptile Fire Spider that Earl right. um, gave me when I was in Texas. So I just had to show this beautiful, perfect little spider. Speaking of the spider gene, this animal has no defect whatsoever. I will be breeding it. Um, like I said, it was a gift to the deadly tarantula girl because it had the spider gene and it has the uh, new and unusual fire gene that had been imported from africa it's a beautiful snake there's nothing wrong with the snake i love it and um i want to thank earl for giving it to me and um yeah it's just an amazing animal there are tons of fires out there that have nothing wrong with them um Bye. yeah this poor little animal on the other hand has a lot of problems and it's a lesser calico and sometimes he holds his head upside down and does weird little things. He looks like he's stargazing. And, you know, sometimes he looks really screwed up, but he still eats. I'm not planning on euthanizing this snake. However, it probably will not go into my breeding program. I mean, you got to use your brains. Yeah, we have a bunch of snakes that are literally just pets. Yeah. Uh, we're given a, a pastel yellow belly with one eye. Uh huh. Um, he's still, or, or no, it's a girl. She's like twenty five hundred grams. Right. She, she eats, you know, every Friday, and um, she's one of the, you know, one of the better snakes uh, in the collection. So we're not gonna, you know, euthanize her just because she doesn't, you know, she doesn't have an eye. We're not gonna right. breed her because I don't know if it was an incubation problem or it's genetic. But exactly. You know, so there's uh there's a lot that we uh oh man I just blew up your image and man the vertical lines are really working right now that's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Oh crap! I I just put your full screen. Oh. I was I was looking at myself before all of this because I'm that vain. Yeah. Well. Oh, you've got those long beautiful tresses. I don't blame you. Yeah. Well, you know, it's you know. I know you can't help because all of this, right? Well, you know, Fat Jesus kind of does something for me. I knew it. I knew it. Fat <laughs> Jesus does shit for a lot of people. Okay. <laughs> oh, what's with the? Uh, how come I get a black background instead of your dining room? Because you kept your dining room with uh, 
the bug. That was not up to me. I don't know why. I think because somebody wanted to do her thing at the dining room table and she didn't want to be in the uh, shop. Just like mom, you know. Yeah. You and your dumb live streams. I know. I gotta be left alone. Yep. I need time, right? <laughs> Yeah, I didn't set this up. I was like, why are we doing the backdrop backdrop today when we don't need it? And, yeah. um, you know, before I was doing black, then I went to my Zilla banner that Ryan McVeigh gave me. Right. And uh, then we went without one for a little while. Now we're back to black. What do you know? Maybe I it's because like it went so well with my snakes and the fat man swag. Maybe. I think that it doesn't matter what backdrop you have because you always look so good. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I know. I'm adorable. Um, quick, this is like the rugged Marlboro man, you know, uh, kind of mountain man look. Yeah, you know? it works. No, I really got to shave. I, I'm just a lazy sack of shit. But beards are in. Yeah, no, I, I know. I know. Flavor savers. Ha. <laughs> right. Um, You're so fashionable. Zilla is one of your sponsors, right? They are. Now, we were right across from Zilla at the show. I mean, <laughs> I know. And they spoke to me. Yeah, they spoke to you. And um, uh, they had a, a tank, you, you know, like a, a vivarium tank that was right. just um, in the middle of the show. Uh -huh. We got so bored at the show that we were thinking about just buying animals and sticking them in that tank when the Zilla guys weren't looking. <laughs> Okay. Well, that but, would have been interesting because there was like a like an elusive cave iguana or something in there. Right. Well, we we knew that probably like twenty five minutes after we bought the first animal that we wanted to we wanted to put in there. Uh, so so we ended up not doing it, but uh, but it would have been funny. But the Zilla guys, um, I wanted to get them over to do the podcast, but uh, they just you know they they really literally showed no interest oh really you, sort of like you when you just stay you know stood at the, t the edge of the table you know hoping hoping against all hope that the fat man would i have to say i don't normally have to speak up to be noticed but you know yeah i don't know I'm so beautiful i'm <laughs> right <laughs> you all know how beautiful you are yes ryan and bill noticed me at their booth and they were so sweet fucking Cusco and fucking Kabilka, huh? Don't be jealous, Chris. I uh, I could call up either one of them right now and put them on speakerphone. <laughs> Did you ever send Brian? Okay, so I, I was on, on Chris's podcast if I hadn't said that already. And you said you were going to send Brian that podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. He actually heard it on the... Um, he, Brian put out a video that uh, him and Miguel were just sitting together and Miguel was like, he's like, hey, did you uh, hear the uh, the fat guy this week? And I'm like, I've been doing this for three years. I get no respect from anybody, right? And uh, he actually played it on air on, on the video. And Brian was laughing, you know, and Brian took it the right way. And Miguel took it the right way, too. Um, but, you know, they knew it was a compliment. You know, obviously, you know. I was yeah, I was going to say, you were, like, talking crap, but actually, like, complimenting Miguel. Right, right. But the thing is, I told everybody to blow up Miguel's Twitter feed, and apparently it worked because he said like 40 or 50, 50 people emailed him telling him to go fuck himself, which is great because, uh, you know, Miguel doesn't really curse all that much. So it's great. To, great, it's great to so. Yeah, that is funny. He's he's kind of becoming like the clickbait oh. king, though. Have you seen some of that yeah, stuff yeah, recently? Yeah, title and his things. Like, he really wants those uh, those YouTube likes. Why don't you do that? Well, and it, yeah, I guess he knows that Barcheck is like a hot topic. So he always, he'll like allude to the idea that he and Brian have had a tiff. And then it's never the case. You know, you know what you should title this video? Showing off the jugs with the fat man. <laughs> they'll think we're talking about your jugs. I bet that you'll get some hits. There'll be a picture of you, obviously. <laughs> I, I bet this will be. You're no, it's still gonna be a worst rated show ever. Nobody gives a it's shit. It's not <laughs> nobody, nobody gives you have a huge following. <laughs> What's that? What kind of numbers are you running? What kind of numbers? Yeah, on your podcast. Oh, we get we get anywhere from four thousand to, to um twelve thousand downloads a month. 
That's awesome. And you're putting out one episode of Snakes and the Fat Man, but you're starting a new show too, right? Yes. Me and two friends from high school, a black guy and a Puerto Rican guy. Why do they have to be black and Puerto Rican? Because they are black and Puerto Rican. <laughs> <laughs> Good for them. Good for them. The Puerto Rican guy's name is Artie Maldonado, and the black guy's name is Dakeem Duncan. You don't get more blacker than Dakeem, okay? That is a black name. Like I'm going to go with you on that one. You're never going to hear his name and say, oh, that might be a Chinese guy. No, okay? Everybody knows. You never know. You never know. No, you pretty much know. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, all we basically do is talk about things that were cool when we grew up and things that aren't cool now. So basically, and, and we always apply racist jokes to everything that we did growing up. You're not listening to me. You're like, I don't care about your dumb comic book podcast. I love your podcast. I listen to it more than anyone in the world. <laughs> You know what? It's kind of sick and weird. We play your shows over and over. You know how many times I've heard about Ralph's medical treatment to his butt? Yeah, but I'll apologize for the first one. The, the ones after that. You, the, the, <laughs> okay. All right. I, I, I don't listen to any podcast that I do. I hate That's this. probably a good idea. Dumb New York voice. I, I just, you know, it's just ridiculous. Uh-huh. I remember um, being in California and some... We're watching TV and some con ed guy gets on the TV, you know, TV from New York. That's the electrical company here in New York. Okay. I was like, and okay. the guy's like, hey, yo, uh, what happened was this pole fell down. And we had to save the mother and pull her out. And, you know, we did what we had to do. And I was, I looked at my girlfriend and I was like, Jesus Christ, do I sound that fucking stupid? <laughs> like, yeah, you did. She goes, but you kind of lost it now. She goes, but whenever you talk to your dumb friends mm. in New York, you always get it back for two or three days. Really? Yeah, so, and now that I live here again, I, I sound just like every other douche on the street. So I hate it. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know how to fake a New York ass accent, or I'd make fun of you right now. Eh, it's, it's okay. En enough people do it. Enough people okay. do it. Tell me how much I suck on the comments for the podcast. So it's all. Oh, yes, that's a different me. kind of love. I'm, I'm a delicate flower. I got to tell you. And, uh, <laughs> you know, words hurt like bullets to my heart. So um, who's been your favorite guest ever? Uh, you know, you. other than me, of course. You. Other than me. See, when I asked you the same question, you were like, uh, Joseph from Alabama. All right. <laughs> I was like, holy yeah. shit, I don't even compare to Joseph from Alabama. Well, you're no Joseph, but you are kind of like a Jesus. Yes, I, I, I know. Um, I liked having uh, Brian on a lot. I love having Justin on. Brian uh, Cusco or Barczyk? Both, actually, because Barczyk, um, you know, I was only expecting like a 45-minute interview from him. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, we, we actually sat there for about three hours. And just oh wow! Not the shit. So, um, he's a really good guy, and and I think that a, a lot of shit has been on him for a long yeah. time that he doesn't deserve, you know. So, um, but I would say you know Ozzy is a great guy to have. Uh, Mark Mandic, I just met recently, and when he was on the podcast, I loved having him. Yeah, you know, Mark is I, I I talk to Mark, you know, three times a month just to shoot the shit. So awesome. a lot of I've become friends with um, and uh, I met a lot of people in Texas who are really you know are, I'm becoming great friends with them I met a lot of douches in Texas too um, a lot of people are just weird as shit down there you know? <laughs> so much now fun. you're talking crap about the Texas my peeps in Texas I love Look, going to Texas I love I love the people in Texas okay but there's no better way to scream to the world that you've given up than a guy wearing sweatpants out in public, okay? And then we've seen these camouflage wearing Duck Dynasty looking people that are wearing camouflage pants and dress shirts. Like, like people from Texas are, are you, you know, saying fuck these people. They're, yeah, that's a special kind of special right there. Well, there's a... Uh, there's a special kind of white people in Texas. Matter of fact, I had to tell Donato to not 
tell every anyone he was going to choke them out like he did in Florida because everybody in Texas is carrying guns and Donato will get killed. But luckily, Donato found the one Italian family in Texas. Uh, they're his uncle and aunt, and he went. He spent most of the most of the weekend there. Interesting. Yeah, no, it's not. I know it's not. I, I could tell so, you fake, your fake interesting look. Shut up. Jesus Christ. <laughs> ah. Wow. I don't even know where to go from here. You just I'm don't not... stop insulting me. What's that? Tell me, I know you're hoping to streamline your, um, you know, I want to know though, what other reptiles you've kept. Cause I, now you're just doing ball pythons now. Do you find that boring? I have to ask. Yes, absolutely. I, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What else have you kept? I've kept, uh, monocle cobras. I've kept, uh, alligators. I've kept, uh, Savannah monitors. Um, look, you're just typing away now. Like you don't care what I'm saying. I'm corresponding with our fans. They're probably your fans saying, I, I know a guy's like, you look good in that shirt, girl. No one has said that. No one, only you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've, I've kept a lot of things. Uh, well, we, we had a uh, Belgian draft horses out in California. Uh, oh, no. Yeah. We had four of them. Yeah. That's my dream. And yeah, they're just a judge. They, they, we had an Xterra in California, and like what a horse is just towered over the Xterra. Is you that know, a car? Like keeping a dinosaur, you know? Is yeah, an Xterra a car? Yeah, it's like a Nissan truck, like a little truck. Okay, sounds like a car. Okay, so that was a pretty good guess. Yeah, I, I knew that. Yeah, no, like how tall were they? Like 16, 17, 18 hands? I don't even know. They were about a foot taller than me. And I'm six feet. That's but it's like I, I could walk under their neck, like just you know straight up. So, wow. I hated them. I'm like you know they're they're the gift that keeps on taking. Like why would anybody want a horse? Well, did you ride? No, I'm allergic to them. Oh if my I, god! Them, you should have given them to me. Oh yeah. I'm yeah. loving those horses. Yeah, you, you think I'm I just give away horses to everybody that stands at the front foot of my table and says nothing to me? I wasn't good enough for you. Yep, I'm just, I said that. I, I if I have access to the horses again, they're yours, okay? Whatever you oh, want. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you. I'm gonna yeah. start building a pen. Oh, okay. Well, you know, you, you got horses, <laughs> now, don't you? I do have miniature horses. I love them so much. I kiss them each every morning on their fuzzy little noses. But, you know, they're tiny. I, I love them. I love them because they're tiny. I had standard horses when I was growing up, and I loved them. But I always wanted miniature horses. Now all I have is miniature horses. And I love them so much. But I've never had draft horses, and I want we them. Had a, we had a miniature horse, too. And uh, my ex kept it in the house. And it would just shit in the living room. Well, just, what do you expect? I'm like, I'm like, this is not a dog. You can't bring it in the house. And we literally had a week long fight because she brought it in the house. Really? Yeah. Who won? You did. No, she, of, of course she did because I'm, I'm <laughs> like a little woman and I do whatever the girl wants. You know. I mean, it, it, that that doesn't make you a woman. That makes you a smart man who, in the end gets what he wants right let me, let me tell you something she literally said to me you're everything that's wrong with men rolled up into one person wow that hurts i was like yeah okay you know and maybe somebody else will let you keep a horse in the house knock yourself out mm. Mm. interesting so what are these people saying oh um so um somebody said they're they're kind of like talking to each other a little bit um, so Stinky Butt says, what up, T-Girl from California? Uh, Brian Gundy jumped on. You know who that is, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's on. And um, let's see. Insano Juggalo is talking. Aaron Crafts. Somebody. And so somebody said, Francis Smith said, Brian needs to learn more about aquarium maintenance. So we're talking about lots of Brian. So I was like, Brian who? And then he said... Brian B, because I'm guessing, who is this, Francis? Francis doesn't know how to spell the name Barcheck. So I was like, hmm. 
And then somebody said my ex was a miniature horse, which I'm not going to respond to that one because. Oh, penis joke. Yeah. Yeah. That could mean a number of things. Even okay. I'm saying juggalo is saying, yeah, I'm insane. So, all right. There we, there, there we go. Interspecies romance. That's a whole nother topic. Little Sebastian got a crush on you. Oh, well, it's possible. It, Very it, possible. Little Sebastian is the miniature horse from Parks and Recreation. Oh, you know what? I started watching that show and then I just didn't. Show was great. Was it? Okay, I'm going to start watching it. And then every night I'm going to be like, Chris said, because I, I did watch The Office and although it was stupid, it was really funny. Yeah, the office was a little bit better than Parks and Rec. Parks oh, and Rec really? Okay. Well, I, I know it's like along the same line of comedy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like stupid funny once in a while. Yeah, no, I like stupid. Stupid is my wheelhouse. So <laughs> I'll go back to stupid every every time. There's nothing funnier to me than a midget farting. A midget barfing. No, farting. Farting. Okay. Yeah. Well, I will laugh every time at that. Okay. So, I don't know that I've ever experienced that. I have. I've, I was in LA for a while. Uh, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I would pay extra for that. So it's all okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. Information then. about Chris that we all wanted to know. Right. This is literally going to be your lowest rated show ever. No, weird people are going to watch this. It's going to get passed around in strange circles of underground audiences that we may never know about because it's going to be like on the dark, dark web something. What? Weird. Okay. Go ahead. John, go ahead. You have something amazing to say. I could just Who is your lowest it. rated person besides me? You know, I... I don't know. Uh, I'd have to go back and look. Um, well, who was your worst guest besides me? Who was my worst guest? Of course, I don't pick anybody dumb. Who was my right. worst guest? Right, yeah. Well, I can't think of anybody terrible. If there was anyone, I can't even remember them. I haven't been doing the interviews very long yet. Like, a couple of months. Maybe. Oh, I know. The one who didn't show up, probably. Oh. Yeah, so feel comfortable sorry, guy, if you're listening. He apologized later. So would you would you feel comfortable giving us his name? Well, sure, I'll tell the story. So right. there's a smaller channel out there. So we were watching him kind of on and off. He's got some nice hands. Some he's into berms and stuff. So I was like, that's cool. His name is Sean. Not spelled like Sean Bradley, spelled like most people spell Sean. His channel's Old Toy City Reptiles. And so um, we had decided that we wanted to do big people that were already well-established to interview. We wanted to do kind of the old timers, the people who are sort of the founding fathers, like Bob Clark and Dave and Tracy Barker. And like, I don't know if you saw anything I did with Earl Turner. He's, I don't know how old he is, but like crazy, one of the, that's the, he, one of the more recent ones, right? Uh, yes, Earl Turner. Well, I didn't do a. I, I did a face to face with him while I was in Arlington, actually. But yeah, um, okay. yeah, he's he survived some pretty serious bites, and I mean, has some really neat stories. Like worked with Anson Wong, and I think he was in um, the books like Stolen World and the Dragon or the Lizard King. I think those are the names of the two books the two biggest books about smuggling. We just found out about another one. I want to read it. But um, so anyway, um, we decided to also do kind of up and coming channels. And so I liked this guy, Sean. And um, so I scheduled a live with him and we spoke that day even. And I'm like, Are we good to go. And he was like, yeah. And then when it came time, he just wasn't answering and wasn't answering my invite. And people were like, what's going on is he okay and so a lot of my viewers actually were contacting him and asking him are you all right and i was saying i hope he's okay because i think he was about to go home from work or maybe driving home from work when we last corresponded and he was saying i'm going home to get ready so i'm like i hope he didn't get into a wreck or anything and the next day he texted me and said sorry i broke my phone and i was like 
oh, well, are you okay? And he was like, yeah, I just broke my phone. And I was like, huh, okay. Well, you know, obviously I wish he would have contacted me at the time. So what we did was we had somebody who um, works for us, who was handy, who I just brought her on and we did a face-to-face -face and it was fine. I mean, it wasn't catastrophic, but it, you know, ideally it would have been better if he had been on the show or if he could have contacted me somehow and, you know, let me know that he wouldn't have been appearing. So I hate to call that person out. And he's asked if we can reschedule and we'll, we'll probably try to find a day, but we're booked out now for a while. So, um, yeah. Let me I tell you know. something. You could just sit there in that shirt and not interview anybody and you'll have a bunch of views. Like braid uh, my hair or something? No, don't braid your hair. That's gross. Just um, <gasps> let, the hair out. Like, let, let the hair out. Um, the bangs are kind of cool. They're a little Asian, like Asian inspired. Is that um, good? Well, it all depends. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, certain. Oh, yeah, that's looking good. Um, you know, <laughs> let, the hair, let the hair out a little bit. And just uh, actually, it's like a two hour show. So start the show with your hair like this, then let it out. Okay. And then maybe take the shirt off and put it up to the screen. So people go to my show thanking me and then just lower the shirt and get the bra shot and then just be like, and the live stream. Your ideas. I'm just saying your, your we'll husband. file that one away for the not happening category. Thank you for your input. Your husband is not just sitting there right now saying I'm going to kill this. <laughs> His face is getting redder and redder. Just kidding. As I've told you, he's a very good sport. Right. I'm not really. And he knows. Could, could he come in the camera a little bit? Did what? Can he come in the camera a little bit? I don't know if he's with the near shot, actually. I think he's monitoring the stream from across the house. Because oh. if you have it too close, it gets all weird. Oh, but right. maybe he'll come over when he hears you talking about this. Okay. I would like to meet the young gentleman. Okay. Who's actually my age. Because he gives me hope. Yeah, you know, I kind of resent you saying, I'm an old man, I'm an old man. And I'm like, hey, you're not that old. I'm not that 45 old. 45 is the new 60. For, 45 is the new 36. There he What's is. Up, Look at those biceps. <laughs> Yeah, he's a lot bigger than I thought he was. Never mind. I refrain from saying anything about you. <laughs> Mute it all. There you go. <laughs> Don't Sorry, forget that, Chris. Five-year-olds have a chance, okay? He should give you hope. Look look at all this. He, he, I'm, yeah, I've been looking at all of that for like the last <laughs> <laughs> All right. I've got to ask you. Okay. Uh uh, what are your plans for the future? Just so you know, you're breaking up on me. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I'll say it slower. What are your plans for the future? Uh, Seeing that you're a hundred and all. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We only got a couple. <laughs> right? Um, doing more podcasting. Um, the, obviously the, the, the snakes and the fat cool. man is the main one. And the Council of Comicdom is the one with right. the black guy and a Puerto Rican. I know it's a stupid name, but go to iTunes and find it. We're on we're on iTunes now. Um, but doing and you know, kind of uh, working with the higher end stuff as far as ball pythons go. You know, so, I like to not have a lot of byproduct. Your other show, are you going to do that once a month too? We're doing it twice a month. Cool. Because what happens is they just come over to the house and we just put, you know, hit the record button and we just talk about shit and we curse so much and a, a bunch of racist shitheads that it's all just pretty funny. So, you know, we just record it for three hours and then put it up on the internet. Interesting. So is it going to be totally raw every time? Every and I time. don't mean gross. I mean unedited. 
Every, yeah, every time. But it's going to be a little gross, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That we we be- have a contest right now, okay, running, where if, if you could name the three Latino people in the nine Star Wars movies or ten Star Wars movies that are out right now, you get a date with Chocolate Thunder, the black guy, on the podcast. Chocolate Thunder. I want to meet him. El Thunder, El Chocolate. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Fucking. He's like uh he's like Biggie Smalls if Biggie Smalls couldn't rap and wasn't funny. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a winner. <laughs> he is awesome. Okay. So yeah, so you can, if you can name the three Latinos in the whole Star Wars movie franchise, then you you get a date with Chocolate Thunder. Very interesting. Yeah. Well, are you bored of me yet? No, not at all. I know you got to be bored with me, though, because this is asking. I'm not. You have to be like, shut the fuck up. You're the first guest that actually insulted me multiple times. Well, that's true. But, you know, I know that you're doing it with love. Sure. Of course you are. No, actually, Chris and I have honestly become, like, really good friends. I don't know if I can say best friends because Brian Gundy said he would be best friends with me. So that spot's kind of reserved, even though Brian and I don't talk all that much. He's on here. He's watching right now. So I love you, Brian. Brian's older, though. I think, uh, you know, Brian's I hot. To he's more. got a cool little room. Have you seen it? He has a channel. Do you watch him at all? Uh, no, I don't really watch many. You know what I watch on YouTube is I watch uh, Hot Ones. Do you watch that? What is it? Hot Ones. No. It's a show. Oh. Where famous people come on and the guest makes them eat chicken wings that get progressively hotter but he asks them questions in between. So like one, two, and three are normally pretty easy. And, uh, but four through 10, I mean, people are throwing up on the show. <laughs> I mean, but like these famous celebrities, like, like Gordon Ramsay and, um, um, you know, uh, uh, what, what's the, Jack Black and, you know, all these other guys. Yeah, so I watched that show. Uh, and then I, I try to watch Brian Cusco a lot, but he's just too happy for me. You know, I mean, like, I love Brian. I, I love him. When he, okay. He used to say good morning, sunshine or something like that. Now yeah. he says top of the morning to, oh, hold on. Let me, let me, let me big screen you. Everybody look at that. Say good morning, sunshine. Say it. You know, I'm say not going to say it. <laughs> I never say good morning, sunshine in my Can you life. Move that? Can you move that over just a little bit more? Oh yeah. Say it. Say it. Good morning, sunshine. Good morning, sunshine. <laughs> Be still, I my know. beating heart. <laughs> There's something going on downstairs right now. I get it. <laughs> uh, Brian is probably one of the best looking people around. Okay. I'm not saying in the snake business, I'm saying around in general. Oh. He, he is like a less hairy Aquaman. So you could kind of go there. I can, I'm envisioning that right now. Well, well, the thing is, too, is he looks like every, um, like he looks like the Indian from Young Guns, uh, Lou Diamond Phillips. He kind of does. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to say La Bamba because I thought that might be racist, you know. So, hmm. kind of. So Brian's with... actually like Asian Polynesian. He's poly- yeah. So I'm not. I'm Asian, Mexican, Spanish, Native American. So I didn't what know if Asian people are... this because we're both YouTube creators or because we're both like. Mixed Asian California babies. Well, what kind of Asian are you? Chinese. What? Chinese. Oh, okay. I'll have a number four. Coming right up. All right. <laughs> you None of my accents are good. Right. None of my accents. Okay. I'm too educated. I can't uh, make up accents anymore. We all know you're a teacher. Come down. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. So speaking of which, what did you actually study in school? I can't remember. Oh, marketing or something? Graphic design. Yeah. Graphic design. Mm -hmm. So does that influence what you do online, do you feel? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. For a main uh, day job, I'm a marketing coordinator and a web designer. So Marketing coordinator. Big money. uh, It's not as much money as I want. But it's enough money for now, you know. So, 
So have you considered expanding What's into that? um doing videos? You're all breaking up on me. Oh, can you hear me now? I can. It, the video was freezing. I said, have you considered uh, going into video? No. Look at the way I look. Uh, going into video. Are you kidding me? You're, you're like a... This for an hour. You're like a voluptuous, tall... I look... Uh, here's my problem. I look like every wrestler slash biker <laughs> slash rock guy in every movie that you've ever seen. That's that's possible. So, uh, uh, look, uh, I, I'm hideous, okay? I don't do a YouTube channel. I do the, the preview videos for my show only because I have to. And the ladies love it. Let me tell you something. Ladies love all of this. I get it, okay? But uh, <laughs> one lady at Arlington didn't love all of that. She but... didn't? No. Who was it? You want me to go after her? Uh, you'd be going after yourself. <gasps> you jerk. I know. You, you know, I'm just not used to being rejected. Yeah, no, I know. Please believe me. I know you're not. Look at me. I'm used to being rejected all the time. Rejection is also my wheelhouse. Okay. So I going. really, I just thought that you would be as accepting and warm toward me as any guy. Oh, I don't know, Justin or Brian or Brian and Bill from Zilla or Sean Bradley or King. I love King. I know. King is King cool. Smith. Yeah, King is, King is really I cool. love him. I've only talked to him a couple of times, but every time I talked to him, he was cool. But every time uh, he does say, tell me the same thing. I, I know, it. but he's so cute. We want to hang out with him. And I love Sean too, oh, but he's just it. really busy right the, now. The same thing he tells me every time is I walk up to the table and King's like, Sean's not here. I'm like, yeah, of course not. You know? Yeah. <laughs> then I got to look around. I got a funny Sean story. You want to hear it? I would love it. Sean Bradley? Sean Bradley, yeah. Okay. Sean and I'm I getting... become, you know, you know yeah. pretty good friends. So um, at Daytona, we're going to a restaurant. We decide to go to dinner together. And uh, okay. Donato was with me, my friend Donato that was in Texas. And um, we were following Sean to the restaurant. And Donato had kept uh, a handicap sticker from New York. He, and he <laughs> put it on our car in Florida, right? So we drive all the way to the, uh, to the restaurant and Donato looks at me. And like real serious, he's like, yeah, um, I, I don't think I'm going to use the handicap sticker. <laughs> no. Well, that was tasteful of him. It was more tasteful than Donato normally is, you know? So, yeah. But but the great thing about Sean is we told him the story and he fucking laughed his ass off, you know? So, um, yeah, that's my Sean story. And then. Um, Go ahead. I I have other short stories that I'm you know not comfortable, you know, telling the world because it would get us both in trouble. So it's all good. But that's what we do in Daytona. Have you ever been to Daytona? Okay, I went to Daytona once in okay. the nineties. It's been a little bit. I want to go back. It's been a little bit. Really? So you were there when like Ralph. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There. All the big shots would air out on at the pool and all that. So way yeah. back in the day, way back. Um, and I, of course, Tinley's the, the cool place to be now. So I really, really am set on going to Tinley in October. Are you going to go? I actually um, just did my hotel reservations for Tinley in the following year. Oh, because the hotel's already sold out, you know. Oh. But what I would did uh, I'll stay in your room. There's a bunch of hotels. You yeah, you could stay there. Leave, <laughs> leave the big guy at home. Leave the, leave the Hulk at home. Okay, hey, hey, he travels with me. <laughs> but um, I I think there's a couple of hotels across the street. If there are, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna go and hopefully, uh, Bob and Brian will let me uh do the Fat Man table again because oh, I'm not gonna cool. bring animals to Tinley. We did that once and. That, oh, that, no, I wouldn't have been there. No, that'd be too. I mean, for me, what, what 
I mean, to drive animals from New Mexico to go to Chicago. Yeah, that, that that's rough. Well, we we had them shipped uh, yeah. to our friend John, and then we just flew in because John lives in Ohio, right. and he's only a couple hours away. But never again. I mean, we just got our display cases back three weeks ago, four weeks ago, from Tinley two years ago. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, just my gosh. We weren't doing local shows, and then I decided I wanted to do a couple of local shows. Uh, so I, I was just storing them at John's house. And then I was oh, like, yeah. Yeah, I was like, hey, can we have those cases back? He's like, Jesus Christ. And he had to ship these, you know, 40 pound cases to us. Right. Yeah, not cool. Crazy. Crazy. Well, um, yeah, I, I want to go to um, Tinley. Like Brian Cusco was like, leave on Thursday, plan on being there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then everybody splits Sunday night. Yeah, or, or Monday. I mean, normally I go Thursday to Monday, but yeah. You're, so you you got to take the, that time off, you know. Right. Well, um, I was just talking to Ozzy this morning. He's like, "Come to a show. We need to hang out." Which you know he's going to be on my show, but not actually. We you know we want to like hang out. Right. Right. But, um, it's going to be so crazy, though. I mean, there's so many people there, and it's so limited time. It's like, do you really even get to see the people that you plan on seeing when you're there? Well, the thing is that that's why you set up a table and say, yeah. you know, in your off time, come by my table. You know, we, we should actually do something like that. If we could get two tables together, oh, just come, you know, have it like a, a media, you know, line at an event. No, I would love to do something like that. Right. Um, but, you, you know, there, there's things that, that we could do because uh, I would love, you know, going to Tinley uh, in October. And I'm definitely going to Daytona again in August of this year. But Daytona in August, it's like 110 degrees out there. That's awesome. I love being warm. Oh, okay. Well, normally I just go and stay in the hotel and pay $200 a night to do the same thing I would do at the house. You know? <laughs> So, well, how long has it been since you went to the Daytona show recently? Oh, I go every year. Yeah, last oh. year me and Donato went. Cool. Yeah. So, um, um, Donato is funny because, and and we we get our own hotel rooms because I travel really light, and uh -huh. Donato travels like he's Diana Ross on on tour. You oh. Know, he brings like eight suitcases with him, and I'm like, wow. now we like we got to check in. I mean, we're staying for three days. You know, and yeah, he just, he, he, I mean, he packs like a real Italian Gavon, you know, like fucking really. Oh, yeah. He's just out of control. But, um, huh. but he's so much fun to hang out with, you know. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting, huh? What did I just say? Shut up. You're talking about your friend who packs and he's got all his stuff everywhere and you need your space and you travel light and. I'm Where's just thinking about going to Daytona. I think that would be really fun. Oh, going to Daytona. Travel with her. I'll quit my job. Yeah, but you know, you don't want to do that. But Daytona the show kind of sucks, but the hangout is incredible. Yeah. You know, you know what? I was really bummed because Saturday night in in uh, Arlington at the NARBC, well, I shouldn't say I was bummed because I had a great, great night. But, you know, everybody's like, of course, you know, we're going to go to the auction, we're going to party, and I'm like, ah, that sounds so fun. But we had our appointment in Kerrville with Earl, which that was amazing. Amazing, amazing. I got some great videos, hung out with Earl, and he's such a cool guy. I really, really enjoy talking to some of these people that have just been doing it so long. And they're kind of like, I'm just so appreciative of them for helping us get the industry, the hobby, whatever, to where it is now. Because, you know, like you've talked about, these these kids don't know what it was like before you could go to Petco and get a ball python or a tarantula or a chameleon. And, you know, obviously now you can get go on the Internet and buy most animals. I mean, there are things that are protected and stuff. But um, we've we've gotten where we are now thanks to kind of a handful of people so I really like hanging out with those people and also documenting their history and the history of the hobby. 
Well, well, you not can, Earl from tell Curve, everybody what you Earl from Lone Star. Oh, we saw Earl from Lone Star on Saturday night. Yes. Oh, that was wait. Oh, when we went to San Antonio, we saw Earl from Curveville. My bad. Two Earls, two trips. Saturday night from the NARBC, we saw Earl from Lone Star Reptiles. That's right. That was a great night too. Oh yeah, I was sick and his wife gave me all the oils and um, Chris Eaton rejected me. Yeah, I was recovering from that. Well, why don't you tell everybody what you said on my show? Why you like <laughs> hanging out with the older guys and interviewing them? What did I say? <laughs> I believe you said, I really like hanging out with these guys because we don't know how much longer we have with them. <laughs> like the 90 year olds. They're going to be dead soon. Okay. <laughs> wow. Some of them will. No, no, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. So that's why I don't. I don't <laughs> Did you cut that out? What's that? That sounds really awful. Yeah, no. We are alive. No out. editing. Everything that we say is going to live in history no, for it. She, she didn't say they're going to die soon. She said, who knows how long we have left with them. Okay. So, and, and that's, that's true. People you know? don't live forever. I, I agree with that. But I, I think that um, I think that it's true. The problem is that, you know, since I go negative all the time, the um, I, I just don't really care. Like, like, unless you're going to be really funny on the show. Yeah. You know, then don't, you know, like it, I, there's nothing worse than a boring guest, you know, and. You know, some some would argue, then get the hell off this show, Chris. But shut the, up. But at the same time, I've had some people where I'm like, Jesus Christ, this thing sounds like it's going to go on forever. And I have to cut down two hours to like 45 minutes. Who's been your worst rambler? Who's been probably Ralph on the first show. You uh, think no, so? no, actually, there was an interview that I did that I didn't release with Sean. <gasps> was, um, Sean just rambled on and interrupted me, and it sounded like another bullshit show. So I was like, I'm not. <laughs> Sean keeps interrupting me. And Sean calls me out on it all the time. And I'll, I'll probably release it sometime. I, I, I have it somewhere around here. Do uh, it. Because uh, Sean, you know what the thing I like about Sean is Sean gets it. You know? Right. And we were actually thinking about giving Sean a segment on my show, since Sean's not really doing bullshit anymore, uh, called the Bradley Interruption. Uh-oh. And just giving him 10 minutes to do whatever the hell he wants, you know? So... Just randomness? Yeah, just randomness. So the problem is that I don't, you know, I don't know who Sean will call out at any given time, and I don't want him to call out any of my friends. Yeah. <laughs> he was very well behaved on my show. I was. He was, yeah, he was great. I, I watched the entire thing. You know what? I also watched uh, a couple of dudes from California inter uh, interviewed him, and the thing was four fucking hours. Oh, yeah. Over like the course of two days, I watched the whole thing just because I, I, you know, since Sean is my friend now, I right. like him. Yes, to say, you know. Who's there with you? Oh, I. So I was just looking. People are saying hi to uh, Brian Gundy. <laughs> DEA Exotics is on. So they were saying hi to Brian Gundy because they saw that he was on. He's saying hi back to them. Just making sure people aren't asking you questions because that'd be sad if they were like, oh, you said us questions and I did and you <laughs> didn't even look over. So. Is Brian Gundy is getting more attention than I am on this show. Not from me. No, not from you. But, you know, hey, it's okay. <laughs> I am well, I am aware of my standings on the uh, so how people. <laughs> Are you um, ever considering branching out into other animals again? No. Why not? I mean, literally not at all. Um, I come home to uh, my, my house with no animals at all in it, and I love I love that. You love that. I, I might get a dog, you know, but that's the 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 extent of my branching out. Are you allergic to horses, but not dogs? 
Uh, I could get like a short haired dog, like a bulldog or a pit bull. Hmm. Uh, and I tried to get, I don't have a good track record with dogs. So oh. in, when I was in Colorado, we bought like a $5,000 bulldog, an English bulldog. Uh huh. That I paid another thousand dollars for the flight to fly it over from Hungary. And then I paid a guy $500 to drive to Denver to pick it up because I'm not going to drive. I mean, my time is more important than that, right? <laughs> so, so I got the dog and it was a little puppy. And the dog, um, I, I had a, an office in the basement of the house, right? But it was a finished basement and, you know, it was really, you know, kind of top notch. Yeah. And I, I would hear the dog come down the stairs because it's a little fat bulldog, right? Of course. Practically stumbling down the stairs. And I'd be on the phone for work and he would just come up to me and look at me and then shit on the floor. Right. And he would do that constantly. Like if this dog could give me the finger, this dog would give me the finger and then shit on my rug. Right. Interesting. So after a week, I had it and I fucking sent the dog to my girlfriend's cousins in Oregon. Okay. Then when I moved back to California, I wanted a dog and I said, I'm going to get one of those little men in black dogs. Uh, the, the pug, <clears throat> caught, uh, you, you know, that, that's yeah. like a mini bulldog, right? Right. I got one of those dogs and then we went away for work or we went away to play shows or whatever. And my housekeeper called me and told me that the dog is dead <gasps> because coyotes ate him. She had what? Him. Yeah. <laughs> Not a funny story, Chris. Pretty funny though. Pretty funny. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm worried about getting a dog now. I, I'm worried about you getting a dog actually. Yeah, Maybe I you really should am. not get a dog. That's why the, the ball pythons are perfect because they, they shit once a week and they eat once a week, you know, so it's fun. I know you haven't had children, but did you know that dogs have to be potty trained when they're puppies? Uh, look, where's time for that? Okay. You gotta work, work. You gotta make money, right? <laughs> All right. probably happier to have a roof over his head and it should tell himself how to go to the bathroom. I think I just got a stupid dog. I mean, it stands to reason. That there are stupid dogs, right? I'm just going to say yes. Okay, okay, good. Just going to say yes. I can't get a cat. Because, you know, kind of because what? Cat now. That, I mean, that's a little... That just screams I'm gay. I it? was going to say, a single guy alone with his cat? Yeah. You'd have to name it Mittens or something. I, I have, like, some single old people... Mm -hmm. in my building with cats and they just look so so sad all the time well and i don't know that there's like a masculine breed of cat that you can you know like a main coon or I, I would have to call Brittany and get like a, a lycoy or a savannah a savannah i want one so bad Brittany, Brittany is the the hookup and also i know uh um uh, a friend of mine uh Kelly out in California. Um, she she breeds cats also. That Kelly the who? I'm gonna look her up. I'm writing it on my post-it. Kelly who? Oh, she's gonna kill me. I, I don't remember her last name. Um Kelly uh Clarkson. Yeah, don't hold out on me. Clarkson. Yeah. That's a singer. Yeah, I the know. The singer that. Kelly Clarkson. I, I, I know, I know that's right. <laughs> Just relax, Kelly Shepard. All right. I'm coming for you, Kelly Shepard. I'm gonna make up for that by saying we're gonna, we're gonna be come. What's that? I said I'm coming for you, Kelly Shepard. We're gonna be best I, friends forever. I want to make up for that, not remembering her last name because I only have her in my phone as Kelly Sexy. Ke there we go, Kelly. You're too hot. His brain could not remember your last name because of how hot you are. It is pretty hot. Oh, yeah. I she breathes to avoid, us. I try to avoid being friends with ugly people. Okay. Can't do it. 
I'm going to take that as a compliment, I guess. There's so many uglies in the world. You just got to stay away. <laughs> right. All right. You know what the worst thing is? Fat girls with short hair. That's just the worst. Sometimes long hair can be bad. No, I, I could see a fat girl with long hair and be like, man, she's kind of attractive, even though she's a little chubby. But if I see a fat girl with short hair, I'm like, nah. You know, they got like that that Hitler haircut where everything's good. No, uh, they're not cool, man. Can't stand that. But we do have Snakes and the Fat Man shirts in extra large for all you chubbies out there that fucking need one. But are they cute like this, or are they the ugly man shirts that most people sell? They're just like that one. I don't even, I, I forgot to look. Did you, what did you send me, a medium? A medium, yeah. Okay, so good call, good yep. call. Hell yeah. A large would just, I mean, I'm going to send you a small one too. Um, this is, it's, yeah, it's got a little room to stretch, so I could probably, all right, go could ahead. probably do a small I gotta send. I, uh, I gotta send uh, the Hulk over there a shirt too. But I'll yeah, send him, thank you. I'll send him you a man. What size is he? A three X. Did you see those shoulders? Shit, to I don't know. I don't go have through the door. Left, but I'll order some. Okay. I'll take care. No, yeah. All right. So, um, okay, on your website, people can order your shirts. Can they order snakes from your website? Uh, they could order snakes from our Morph Mark Market store. Okay. So, always, website, uh, is the podcast link to your website? Yes. Uh, snakesandafatman.com and councilofcomicdom.com. So, now that – have you have you done your first show yet? Yeah. Yeah, we did two already. Oh. Yeah. I'll have to check those out. It's four hours of racist rambling. Sounds very non-educational, but I'll listen. Uh, yes, very, very. One of the big debates is there was only one black guy on the beach in Jaws. And why did Jaws only eat white people? So what was your what were your findings? I'm dying to know. Jaws was racist. Oh. Hmm. You know how some people when they when they order chicken, they only eat light or dark meat, maybe? Right. That's what I'm saying. Hmm. People suck, right? So. All right. Do you have any messages that you're just dying to get out into the world that we should share or things coming up that people need to know before we wrap for the night? No, no. I just want people to, to listen to Snakes and the Fat Man and the Council of Comicdom and, um, and just laugh a little bit and have a little fun and stop all the, the drama going on in the snake business. That there's no drama going on in the comic book and movie business, so you you could learn a couple of things from that. There uh, we go. So it is educational. There's a moral to the story. Yes, the moral is fuck all these new people that won't even pay hundred dollars for a snake. There we okay. go. Right. All righty. It's a quality message. All yeah. right. So to find your snakes, go to morphmarket.com. Right. The and store. the name of your store is it Snakes and the Fat Man? No, Eyeball. Eyeball. No, eyeball. Yes. Pythons. Eyeballs. Eyeball pythons. Eyeball. I'm gonna write that down. Okay. I already had, but <laughs> what are you gonna I do? I gotta send you an eyeball shirt too. Yeah, please do. Are they cute? They're they're men's shirts. That's all we got left. Uh, okay. Believe so, it or not, the women's shirts sold out in like two days. Wow. Are you making more? No. What? That's it? Yeah, because we're not really vending at shows anymore, you know? Yeah, so but your website. Don't people... Yeah, you know, I don't care. Are they only in black? Uh, they are only in black, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Black's a good t-shirt color. Shirts. Uh, I'll send you a, a, a fat man shirt with my giant head on it. Yeah. And when you wear it to bed, your husband could just look at it disgusted. I um, I imagine I won't be wearing it for long. I I imagine you'd be right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. so to order your snakes, people go to Morph Market, uh, and um, to listen to the podcast. So I'm a little confused. Are there different 
to, to listen to the podcast, you go to the website. But is there another place you can go to find the podcast? Oh, you could just go to iTunes. Okay. And, uh, or, or the Google Play Store and just type in Snakes and a Fat Man or uh, Council of Comicdom and just hit subscribe. And every time I, I upload one, you'll get it automatically. And those are free, right? Yes, they're all free. Awesome. Um, now, here's a quick question because I don't know about podcasting, although I might start podcasting, right? I think you should. I think that you should put every show or every live stream, uh, make it available audio only also. I think I'm going to do that. And I think Chris is going to help me do that. Yes, absolutely. Um, so do you get like paid or do you get something per download? How does it work? No, no. I mean, we only get, you know, like, like I said, our, our biggest one was 12,000 downloads. And 12,000 downloads in podcasting is garbage. Oh. You, you got to get 500,000, 600,000 downloads just to become, you know, get like a paid sponsorship. Okay. What I do, though, is I get sponsorships from reptile uh, businesses. So I charge them per year. And what I do is I record uh, a commercial for that particular company. Mm -hmm. and I Sure, I play it on every podcast. Awesome. So yeah. I know that you're sponsored by Morph Market and Reptichip. Anybody else? Yes, we just got Sea Serpents, the uh, the rack builder, uh, Chris Nettles from um, Florida. He's uh, a cool guy, isn't he? He's, oh my God, he's awesome. He's the hardest working guy I know. That guy will be in Florida one day, Texas the next day, and uh, Alaska the you know two days later. That's crazy. I'm going to contact him. I want to, um, he is, awesome. him. I, I love that guy and he's a big CrossFit guy now. And he's, mm. uh, yeah, he's, I mean, that guy's five years older than me, but looks 20 years younger than me. So, oh, maybe I should have him on the show. I know you send me a shirt, a cute you like, shirt. You like, yeah, he'd send you a shirt. All right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Chris, uh, from sea serpents, if you guys need racks, uh, for any kind of animals, I mean, except for any kind of smaller animals, right? Uh, you know, go go to seaserpents.com and uh, hot box incubators. So hot box incubators. Yeah, we probably got about twenty five or thirty racks from Chris over the years, and we have uh, two of the um, four foot hot box incubators. Oh wow! Yeah. So, so um, you said four foot. That's pretty good. Yeah. They, do they, they do? Custom building? Uh, they do. I mean, but it's all uh, it's all plastic. So, you, you know, you got to call Chris and ask him. But they, they do actual uh, cages similar to like uh, vision cages used to do. Uh -huh. They do. They just do a bunch of stuff. Go to their website and uh, you'll see everything that they do. So is that spelled C like the ocean or is it the letter C? Uh, the letter C. C serpents. C serpents. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Check out seaserpents.com, morphmarket.com, snakesinthefatman.com. Are we missing anything? Reptichip.com. Yeah. JT at Reptichip. Um, and that's, that's about it. Awesome. Well, everybody, this was the amazing, the stunningly handsome, the silly right. Chris Eaton uh, from... Thank you so much. Doing this with me. Eyeballs. Eyeball. Eyeball pythons. Python. Yeah. Pythons. Eyeball pythons. See how smooth yeah, that no. was. And um, Snakes and the Fat Man podcast. And what's the name of the other one? Council of Comicdom. I already know it's a stupid name. The Puerto Rican made it up. So, you, you know. Council of Comicdom. Okay. I'm going to yeah. check that one out next. Okay. I hope you guys like this one. We had kind of a small audience tonight, but I think that this one's going to get passed around. I think that the people we were talking about are going to want to know what we were saying about them. I think so too. All right. yeah. Well, thanks for coming and hanging out with me tonight. This was fun. Thank, Thank you for the shirt, the beautiful shirt. Of course. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, out his podcast and make sure to subscribe tune in
Alrighty then. I think you broke up on me. Um, <laughs> because now you're just frozen in mid sentence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign off and I'm going to tell everybody, thank you, uh, for sticking around this long and good. <laughs>